What is up world class athlete? I'm so fired up where in this video, if you've ever struggled with not knowing exactly where to toss or you found yourself you know, tossing a million times and not being able to hit it, that is gonna end by the end of this video because we're gonna cover my comprehensive serve framework as well as provide you with 100% clarity over exactly where you should toss, how you should toss it there, as well as why you should toss in that specific location. And I'm also gonna provide you with my absolute best drills that you can use the next time you step out on the court to immediately start tapping into accelerated learning principles to develop in your unconscious muscle memory the ability of generating that perfect toss in that perfect location every single time so you can be that player who stepped up to the baseline, feels that confidence knowing that you can execute the perfect toss and blast your serve just like that every single time. So let's begin with my high level serve framework. So the toss at a high level can be broken down into three distinct phases. The first phase is essentially the starting position of the toss. In other words, where is your body oriented as you initiate your toss? The second phase is then gonna be the release phase. In other words, where exactly is your body positioned when your arm releases the ball and the last phase is going to be the follow through or the wind up phase. So by piecing together those three elements of the serve, you're going to know exactly how to start, how to release, and then how to wind up to achieve that perfect toss every single time. The toss is additionally then nested within that three layer framework can then be broken down into three dimensions of placement. In other words, there's an X axis of where you should toss, there's a Y axis of where you should toss, and then lastly, there's a Z axis. So we're gonna break down all three of those elements as it's nested within that three phase framework. So let's dive right in. So the first question is, how exactly should you position your body as you initiate your toss? Now here, especially on the men's tour, there is so much variation from players like Djokovic who start and use a platform stance, who toss with their arm at about a 45 degree angle, to players like Kyrgios or Federer who have their arm positioned lower, to players like Nadal who has their arm bent, actually taking a step in, doing a pinpoint stance. So there's so much variation and there's so much complexity, which makes a lot of sense as to why so many players struggle and are confused with how to execute a perfect toss. Now what's so awesome is in this video, we're gonna cover the core key fundamentals that are gonna allow you to then build upon your own unique style and your own unique flair. So what we're gonna cover in this video and what I highly encourage you to do with your toss starting position is focus on just achieving a few basic checkpoints. With the feet, we're gonna go ahead and adopt the stance of Novak Djokovic because it's very, very simple and very, very effective, allowing you to achieve a very biomechanically efficient toss starting position. That's where your left foot is gonna be pointed towards the net post at about a 45 degree angle, and your right foot is gonna be in line with your back heel, just like that, approximately uh, one foot spaced apart, just like that. Then with your tossing arm, you're gonna go ahead and position your tossing arm slightly above your front knee and slightly inside the court of your front knee. Lastly, with your hitting arm, you're gonna go ahead and comfortably place your racket strings on the ball just like that. So by achieving these key checkpoints, as well as now having your front foot in a dorsiflex position, this is gonna allow you to be in a very, very easy position to then fluidly toss, execute the perfect location, execute your perfect windup, all to give you that confident ability uh, of blasting that serve just like that. So that's exactly how you should toss. Now let's dive into the three dimensions of exactly where you want your toss to be. Go with each axis. So the first axis is gonna be that X axis. In other words, how far to the right or to the left should you place your toss? So the key checkpoint here that virtually every player achieves is as they release, the ball is gonna travel slightly towards the inside of their body where if the ball would land straight on the court, it would land approximately right in front of that front toe, just like that. So by putting it in that position on the x-axis of the ball traveling towards the inside of your body from the lease, what that's gonna allow you to do is it's then gonna allow you to achieve that perfect contact point where the racket will be to the inside of the body, just like that. A super common mistake to look for, especially with uh, players, if you feel like your server's really tense or you feel like you're lacking a lot of power, 
is focus and really make sure that you're achieving that toss going to the left so you can achieve, rather than having your contact above your hand, it can be oriented slightly towards the inside of your hand just like that. The benefit of this checkpoint right here is now watch how easy it is for me to generate power from that checkpoint when I accelerate. I can get so much easy force and it truly feels effortless because I'm now tapping into my shoulder joint as I accelerate. So that's the key checkpoint to focus on with exactly the X axis and that's exactly why as well. The next question you might be wondering is, okay, so if I know exactly where I should toss and I know why I should toss there, how exactly do I get in that position? So here's exactly how you can achieve that perfect X axis. What predicates where that ball goes is the timing of your release. So for example, if I release here, do you think my ball is gonna go towards the right or towards the left if I release here? And the answer is it's gonna go towards the right because that's the angle with which I'm releasing. So the optimal checkpoint that you want for when you're implementing this on your own is that you wanna make sure you're releasing the ball at about eye level. What that's gonna do is by releasing there, that's gonna allow you to position that ball in that perfect location, traveling to give you that optimal contact, traveling in towards the left, just like that. All right, world-class athlete. So now you have a comprehensive framework of understanding exactly where to toss, how to toss there, and why on an x-axis. Let's now jump into the z-axis. In other words, how far inside the court should you be tossing? So this z-axis value is completely dependent on your uh, physical stature. In other words, do you think a player like John Isner is gonna toss more close to the baseline or more inside the baseline versus a player like me or a player like Djokovic? And the answer is because John Isner is so much taller and therefore has longer limbs, he's actually gonna be tossing more inside the court because now when he jumps and explodes, he's gonna be able to have the optimal contact position well inside the court. So if you're about 5'10", or anywhere from like 5'10", to 6'2", what I'd highly encourage you to do is experiment with your z-axis of tossing inside the court anywhere from six inches all the way up to 12 inches or about one foot. What that's gonna allow you to do, and the reason why you wanna toss in this location, is because again, to achieve that effortless power with your contact point, it's so key that, question, do you think that the optimal contact is gonna look something like this or something like this? And the answer is right here. Because by having your trunk in a flex position, as well as your arm in a more extended or adducted position in front of the body, that's gonna automatically allow you to tap into way more force. To intuitively understand this concept, what you can do is go against the wall, and as you're against the wall, stand up completely straight, and then push on the wall. And what you'll notice is you'll immediately start falling back. If you're, even if your weight's like on your heels, you're leaning back, you're gonna fall back. Conversely, if your trunk is in that flex position, if you're at that contact in front, you're leaning forward, you can now generate the force of your body going into the serve. So that's what allows these players when they serve to have that huge pop is because they're getting their body position inside the court to allow them to uh, feel that effortless force going forward with their whole body. All right, world-class athlete, so now you know exactly on an x-axis how, where, and why, and you know on a z-axis, let's now talk about how exactly you can achieve that key z-axis toss and then jump into and close with exactly how high you should toss. So the key element that predicates where your z-axis on your toss goes is simply just how much your arm is traveling inside the court when you toss. The more of this abduction, this is the anatomical term, the more that you're abducting your arm, the further in that toss is gonna travel. So the key value to look for is that you wanna abduct your arm approximately 45 degrees inside the court. So that's simply just gonna look something like this, where the arm is gonna slightly travel in and then you're gonna release and follow through straight up to that highest point, just like that. Now, if you guys are also interested in learning about the exact toss follow through and all of these 17 key anatomical and biomechanical checkpoints specifically engineered and provided with you a comprehensive process to ingrain it in your unconscious muscle memory, I'd highly encourage you to click the link in the description to learn about transformation 
week. So that's exactly how you're gonna achieve that Z-axis. Let's now close with exactly how high you should toss, as well as some specific action-based drills that you can immediately apply the next time you step on the court. So the final element to achieving that perfect toss is gonna be how high you should toss. So essentially, what we'll see every pro do on the tour is although there's some variation, all pros are going to make contact on their serve with their toss at approximately the apex or traveling about six inches down. So when the ball travels up in the air, right, gravity is enacting a downward force and it slows down, reaches what's known as the apex and then travels down. So you'll see that happen right here as the ball reaches the highest point, slows down and comes down. So the moment right there at the highest point, that's the moment approximately when you want to make contact. So if you're naturally a shorter player, you're going to have a slightly lower toss. If you're a taller player, you're going to have a higher toss. But the key checkpoint to focus on is that you toss at a height such that you can achieve contact with the ball traveling slightly down just like that. So all together, piecing together all three of those elements, it's going to look something like this. With my perfect starting position, with now my perfect release position that we talked about, and then finishing with the left arm up, and again, if you want to master all 17 checkpoints of the windup to give you that ability of effortlessly uh, crushing your serve like that, go ahead and click the link in the description. But that last checkpoint, making sure that as you release, you're going to be fluidly shifting your weight from your back foot onto your front foot, getting your heels off the ground, following through straight up, all piecing that together to orchestrate a fluid, confident uh, toss in contact to blast your serve just like that. All right, world class athletes, I hope you guys absolutely love this video. And I know we covered a lot of technical minutia, but truly the key differentiator between truly extraordinary performance and the highest, greatest athletes in the world and, you know, players in the top 100 is not that, you know, Djokovic and Dollar Federer are doing extraordinary things, but rather they're doing ordinary things extraordinarily well. So just by now understanding and being able to go on the court and apply these fundamentals, I'm so confident that just by staying consistent with that process, you're gonna be able to develop over time, persistence, and the confident ability of showing up and embracing the learning journey, you're gonna develop that world-class tossing technique. All right, world-class athletes, I'll see you in the next video. Let's go. Yeah.